All right, so today's topic um, is going to, we're gonna talk about breastfeeding and caffeine use. And this is something that is definitely um, asked all the time, obviously, because caffeine is one of the, you know, it, let's call it a, medic, a drug or a substance that is used very, very commonly. It's, some, it's what we find in coffee, it's what we find in tea. And so, so many moms have questions about that when it comes to breastfeeding their little ones. Is it safe to use caffeine while breastfeeding? What are the limits? What should I be thinking about? Um, what are the effects on myself as well as um, my baby if I'm breastfeeding? Does it go through the milk? So as we talk about breastfeeding and caffeine, it's like anything else. We always wanna talk about uh, moderation, okay? So anything that you consume when you're breastfeeding, you always want to think about moderation, never overdoing anything, um, but keeping it to a moderate amount, okay? Um, and the other thing too to consider and remember is that when we talk about breastfeeding, it is different than talking about pregnancy. So when we talk about substances like caffeine or even alcohol or medications, um, there is a difference between when you're transferring something through your milk when you're breastfeeding versus when you're transferring it in your blood, um, like during pregnancy through the umbilical cord, okay? There's a difference between a blood connection and a milk connection. And I want you to keep that in mind so that when I'm talking about these um, recommendations, you don't cross them over and apply them to pregnancy. They're completely different. And I think that's one of the confusing um, aspects that sometimes moms um, will, kind of um, mistake or, or you know, inter, interchange, including practitioners, and they'll interchange the recommendations. That's really important to make that distinction, all right? There's a difference between a developing fetus, um, you know, and a full-term baby, all right, or even an older baby, and we'll talk about that in a moment. But when it comes to caffeine, um, what we see is that caffeine has um, a lactation, what they consider a lactation risk category, which is a L2, meaning that it's safe, it's safer, okay? Um, L2 means that they're actually, they've studied it in limited quantities in breastfeeding women, and that they found that there is not really an increased risk for side effects for your baby. So caffeine is considered one of the safer um, substances that you can take while you're breastfeeding, all right? The milk levels while you're breastfeeding are fairly low. Um, it's about a half to one and a half percent of your maternal dose, meaning how much you're taking in, about a half to one and a half percent will go through to your milk, all right? And it usually peaks about one to two hours after you ingest it. So, you know, anywhere from an hour or two after you've had your caffeine um, is when those levels are highest. Keep that in mind when you're timing your breastfeedings around it. This matters, um, you know, with any kind of medications, this matters with caffeine, it matters with alcohol. And so that timing is always an important factor that I think not everybody takes into account, all right? So one, and a, one to two hours after consuming the caffeine is when the levels um, are highest, all right? Um, some babies obviously are more sensitive to caffeine than others. Um, usually babies that are younger than six months of age will be more sensitive and age does matter when we talk about um, any of these substances, including caffeine. Uh, babies who are younger will have a harder time, they, they're, they have a harder time clearing things out of their system. They, react, they also react more if you've um, avoided it during pregnancy. So keep that in mind, if, you, if you've eliminated caffeine from your diet while you were pregnant and now you deliver and you are thinking, okay, well I can go back to caffeine, Take it slowly because babies that tend to not be exposed to it while you're, you know, while while in utero, will have a little bit of a harder time. Can react more um, afterwards if they're exposed to it while you're breastfeeding and through your milk. All right, and then um, also those sensitive sensitivities, like I said babies that are younger um, will react more than babies that are older, all right? Here's some of the reasons why that happens. You know, the, when, with anything that you're taking, you always wanna take into consideration your baby's age as well as their health status, okay? Newborns will always have a harder time metabolizing caffeine um, more than older infants, all right? It clears from their body slower. And what I mean by that is when we talk about substances or medications, we always talk about half-life. And, and that means how fast does the medication or the drug or the substance clear out of the body, all right? How long does it take for it to clear out? With an adult, 
um, with a with a newborn, um, it can take with let's say this with a six month or older baby, it can take about two and a half hours for um, for the half life. All right, where that when you compare that to a newborn, that can take up to ninety seven hours of a half life. That means that you know babies who are younger or preterm and those who, babies that are sick cannot clear this out of their systems as easily as an older baby, whether they're three to five months old or six months and older. It gets easier and easier for them to handle those substances. So keep that in mind with your brand new newborn, okay? Doesn't mean that you can't have any caffeine at all. Just keep in mind that you wanna keep that to a minimum or in moderation. All right, that's that's the main thing. As the baby gets older, you can start to um, add more of that into your uh, diet, and with while watching your baby to check for any kind of side effects or symptoms that they may be having. All right, and that brings us to like, how do you know? How do you know if the baby is sensitive to caffeine? What would I be looking for? Okay, um, excessive caffeine intake can result in a baby that shows signs of more stimulation, okay? Babies can become more irritable, more fussy, they can have difficulty sleeping. Um, but these things can also, remember, can be normal for a baby too. Babies can normally be fussy, they can normally be irritable or, or not sleep very much. Um, so you're really looking to see, is this an abnormal thing for your baby? Sometimes it's about trying it out, eliminating, and seeing if the baby's struggling. Um, if you find that you have a baby that's excessively fussy or irritable or really not sleeping well or not staying asleep, asleep for any kind of stretch of time, I would look to the caffeine and say, okay, maybe that maybe my baby is more sensitive to it. All right. The, ba the way to test it, you really have to eliminate it out of your diet for at least two weeks, all right, um, to see if there's a difference. Doing it for a day is not really going to tell you, as with anything when we're testing for breastfeeding, if, if the baby's showing signs and symptoms or sensitivity, you really do need to eliminate for at least a week to two weeks, sometimes even longer, all right? When you do this, um, do it slowly, because if you've been drinking a lot of caffeine, um, it could cause um, withdrawal symptoms in you. It could also, it could cause headaches, um, irritability. Um, so you would just do it slowly and, and see if that helps the baby to do better. Um, sometimes we just don't know until we actually eliminate it out of our system and out of the diet, all right? So how much is too much when it comes to caffeine? You know, again, the only way to know if it's too much is really to look at your baby to see how they're reacting. Every baby is going to be different. Their age, their health is going to affect this, as we already discussed. Um, but most um, experts out there and the research shows that you know, anywhere from a range of around 300 to 750 milligrams of caffeine a day is um, considered safe and normal while breastfeeding. Um, somewhere around five five ounce cups of coffee is equivalent to around 500 milligrams. So staying under the five cup range is recommended, okay? Most of us don't drink more than that, but if you're like me and you have giant mugs that you drink your coffee out of, then five ounces could really be, um, you know, a very small amount in that mug. So calculate and look at the number of ounces that you're drinking and not necessarily the cups. Um, cups can vary in size, all right? So somewhere around five to five, five ounce cups of coffee a day is around 500 milligrams. The range, like we said, um, suggested is somewhere between 300 to 750 milligrams a day. Um, this is again, different than for during pregnancy. This is for breastfeeding. When we talk about pregnancy, we're talking about a lower range. We're talking about up to um, 300 milligrams a day. And even some sources recommend no more than 150 milligrams a day. Um, so again, it's important to make this distinction between pregnancy and breastfeeding, two totally different things, okay? Um, some of the things that I see that do come up when it comes to caffeine is um, you hear different myths. Um, one of them is that caffeine will decrease your milk supply. And this absolutely is a myth. Um, there is no research to show that it does decrease your milk supply. There's been you know, several studies and it's never shown any effects on decreasing supply. So this is one of those common myths that gets spread around. Um, however, here's one of the things that I do want to say about that. Babies that do experience side effects from caffeine that we just talked about, like fussiness, jitteriness, irritability, um, tend to not nurse as well. 
Okay. And so you want to keep this in mind because if they're not nursing as well, that could lead to a decrease in your supply over time. And so although it's not the caffeine directly, that could be decreasing your supply. If your baby's not latching well, if they're not nursing as well as they're not nursing as often, that can have an effect on your milk supply decreasing. So you really want to keep an eye on that. All right. And then lastly, just think about the sources. We started to talk a moment ago about where are the sources of caffeine. We all kind of consider and think about caffeine in coffee, but, the, but caffeine occurs in many other drinks and foods as well, like tea, green tea, soft drinks and sodas, um, sports and energy drinks. You may be getting caffeine in places that you're not um, thinking about. And that all needs to be added into your calculation each day. All right. So keep an eye on those, including chocolate. Um, even some over-the-counter and prescription medications can have caffeine, as well as um, some herbal products. So Always look for the hidden caffeine in your foods and in your drinks, as well as whatever coffee you may be drinking or tea, and add that up so that you know you're not really exceeding, again, back to moderation, always in moderation when you're breastfeeding and including when you're pregnant, all right? So I hope this helps and that for you guys who want to enjoy your cup of coffee, and I'm going to take a sip of uh, my drink here. Um, if you want to enjoy your coffee or your tea, you can go ahead and do that without um, guilt, okay? But always be careful and watch your baby to make sure that they too are um, handling it well, all right?